right, viewers, here I am re-recording my Erewhon review, which should have been posted a week ago. I recorded it at the same time I recorded my Moby Dick video in that great uh, space that I called Moonbase Alpha. But I discovered when I sat down to edit the video last week that I, I had somehow misplaced the sound. I had lost the sound file. And with this sort of thing, I think sound is a lot more important than pictures. So here we go, re-recording. First of all, the title Erewhon is supposed to be the word nowhere, backwards, almost. <laughs> it's keeping in the true tradition of the utopian novels in that the word utopia itself is an ancient Greek word meaning nowhere or no place or not a real place. Anyway, it was written by Samuel Butler, published in the 1870s, I believe. It's the story of a young man who immigrates to a colony on a newly settled continent. He's clearly talking about Australia, although he doesn't name it. There are successful settlements on the coast, but there is a ring of high mountains uh, keeping uh, people from exploring the interior. The indigenous peoples won't talk about what's on the other side of the mountains. So this guy is determined to get over there, and he does. He discovers a lost civilization that appears to be descended from European civilizations, but has been separated by thousands of years. And the meat of the book is his description of their society and how backwards and upside down they do everything. But of course, he's talking about us, human society. It is socio-political satire in the vein of Gulliver's Travels. I said I would mention Gulliver's Travels again in this review, and it was surprisingly good. I thought that once it got into the lengthy descriptions of the Arahuan society that it would get long, that it would get uh, boring, but it did not. I enjoyed the book all the way through. I was particularly concerned about the part where he started to describe the Arahuanians' attitude toward machines, how they had banned all machines out of fear that machines would take over. I was concerned that this made-up philosophy would be obtuse, um, uh, downright silly, and, and pointless even. But no, it was actually quite good. And uh, I recommend that uh, everyone who's interested in science fiction and in the modern problems of, of AI and machines actually threatening to take over today, I, I recommend that uh, everyone read this. There was one particular passage that struck me so strongly that I've actually taken a screen cap of it here. I was reading it, the book on my phone, by the way. Here, here is Butler in the late 1800s actually writing about the idea, how can we consider even ourselves, our own bodies, to be individuals when we're made up of cells and much of our body, perhaps even a majority of our body, is actually bacteria and parasites. I thought that was a new thing. I thought that was a new 21st century, late 20th century concept. And here was Butler writing about that very thing. I, I strongly recommend this book for science fiction readers and for science aficionados. One other thing I wanted to say that was in the introduction, this, this edition included the introductions to all of the editions that uh, uh, Butler published in his lifetime. And in those introductions, he complained about having problems with copyright law about how he was having to add new stuff to each edition so that he could renew copyright. And I think it's amazing that even back then, authors were having the same kind of problems with copyright that we're having today. And if you want to learn about the problems with modern copyright, I suggest you look up the animator Nina Paley, who knows an awful lot about the subject of copyright. All right, come back for the next video, whatever that turns out to be. Bye. Please remember to press that like button, it helps my videos get seen. And then subscribe so you can come back next time. I do science fiction book, TV, and movie reviews all the time. And please consider becoming a patron. There's a link in the description below.